C10 Talk, episode 123. Kicking 2019 off in style with Cheyenne Lord. That's right, Cheyenne Lord. You know, I said, hey, I got a hundred grand easy for a build. Like, I'm no joke. I'm going to build it. I want to build it in my charity name. You can build a charity truck. It's going to help you with your brand. Do a charity build. Flew out within a few days. Met with um, Dave, the main shop guy and uh, owner. He owns Sparks Motors, too, there. And uh, within 30 minutes, we shook on it and had an idea for the show. He had never done anything that clean. You know, I warned him, hey, this is going to be a real clean thing. You see 10 guys are like, they know their shit. Damn, son. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right. 2019. What up, C10 Nation? Starting it off with a bang. Cheyenne Lord. Lord Cheyenne. The guy behind the uh, Sparks Motor. Big old LBZ turbo sticking out the hood. C10. So, Happy New Year. And uh, kicking it off right. Kicking it off real. Barrett's in town. That's uh, That's always fun. Head up there and uh, just craziness. You know, I've been going to Barrett for over 20 years. And I'll tell you right now, the difference is, you know, back in the day, a C10 fanatic, even back then, you know, there'd be under 10. I mean, maybe a dozen. And you'd see them there, kind of a higher end truck, primarily a 67 to 72. Every now and then you'd see, a, you know, maybe a 64, 65, 66. But boy, oh boy. I feel like there's a lot more in the last couple of years, and I, I feel like rightfully so. The collectors, the guys are getting older. Uh, a lot of guys are redoing them. They're bringing bigger money. The, we're seeing more at SEMA. If you see more at SEMA, then you're going to see those high-end builds, and uh, rightfully so, they're going to try to sell them, and they're going to take them to Barrett. So probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, car auctions. We're lucky because it's right here. So some of the fellas are up there. Was able to, you know, kind of been going up there doing some interviews. If you've been following me on both Instagram and, you know, and social media, then you get to see some of the live stuff that I've been broadcasting is some of these trucks are going up on the block and that's always fun. It's even funner when you get to interview the owner before and after. So uh, put a little bonus episode together that'll kick out next week. We've got some big fish. We've got some Mike Blackwelder. We've got some uh, Hoagie Shine, Dan Hogan. And they all have all sold trucks. Mike and Dan sold today. I would say Mike probably didn't do as well as he would have hoped, but he did okay. And Hoagie Shine did did well. So it's good. You know, and Big Fish did really well. I think he was really happy. He was happy with his 86 short bed four wheel drive that was just sweet, kick ass, smooth. And then the next day they sold his crew cab, kind of uh, the, the indie hauler truck that he put together and took to LST 2018. They sold it, and I don't even think he was there, and I don't think he even knew that it had sold yet, and somebody probably sent him a message or texted him or something like that. But nonetheless, uh, to get the the interview pre and post while guys are, you know, they're kind of amped, they're nervous, they're worried, and uh, that'll kick out. Now, with Cheyenne, we sat down, reached out to him, said, hey, dude, we got to nail this interview down because you're selling the truck. So, what a rad dude, you know, invited us into his house. Uh, we screwed around half the day, drove the truck, the C10, drove the Demon, and uh, again, invited us into his just pimp and pad, rad dude, rad cars and trucks, and, and again, rad pad. And uh, that's that's a cool thing. I mean, I really didn't know him. We, you know, we had kind of had some, some messages back and forth, but, uh, you know, a lot in common. Well, besides he's he's loaded, <laughs> uh, but firemen started out at the same time, firefighter, and uh, kind of worked our way through that process. Now I'm doing podcasts and still being a firefighter, and he uh, runs and owns a charity air ambulance. So cool dude that loves to give back, and that's a really that's a you know that's that's kind of shows you who Cheyenne is. So his he's got a Chevelle that's going to sell tomorrow, uh, LBZ Chevelle that'll sell Friday. And then he's got the the Sparks C10 that is going to sell Saturday. So probably head back up. I got to work tomorrow, but hopefully I get this out. I've been meaning to get this damn thing out and uh, get it over to you guys. So 
We got some of the boys. We've been going up. It's a good time. It's packed. It's crazy. If you ever get a chance, I would say, man, I don't know. SEMA is still higher than Barrett to me, but uh, Barrett's pretty crazy. Now, it's easy because it's right here in my backyard, but sometimes with Barrett, it's almost about the people as much as anything, just people watching. So uh, it's good. It's a definitely an entertaining show. A lot going on. I'm sure you guys watch it on Motor Trend, and you know you, you see all the cars that come through. But for whatever reason, the Scottsdale's the, the kind of the granddaddy of them all. And uh, again, we've we've been able to put some interviews together and uh, put that little bonus episode out for you. And hopefully, I'll meet up with Cheyenne after his sells on Saturday, or maybe reach back out to him and then get that onto the bonus episode. After that, I've got uh, so bonus episode, and then I've got Paul Hitch. Paul Hitch is the or was the GM chief engineer Chevrolet trucks from 1965 to 1976. He's 101 years old. He'll be 102 in March, and uh, he's next. So. Uh, I'm waiting on to talk to a GM, another GM guy that interviewed Paul, and I wanted to kind of blend those two. So we'll see if that happens before I drop Paul's interview, which I'm hoping to do the last week of January. So episode 123, Cheyenne Lord coming at you. Bonus episode in there, a little uh, Barrett coverage, and then Paul Hitch. We're cranking. We're making it happen. We've got LST right around the corner, almost about a month out. I'm going to do eastbound and down. I need to reach out to some of the fellas and let them all know. I've been getting some text messages, but we will do an eastbound and down to the throwdown. And I'm going to take Yellowstone, which will allow me to do some shakedown. Hopefully in the next month, I'll shake it down and then take it out there because I didn't get a chance to do it in September for C10s in the trailer park. And I'll do it uh, on uh, eastbound and down to uh, the throwdown to LST. And then I can get a you know a good idea of what that 4080 and that, uh, that Holly Terminator is going to do for my fuel mileage. Uh, in the past, when I've taken the Yellowstone, I'm about 7.9 to 8 miles per gallon. So let's see what it does. Good dudes. Uh, let's see here. Met the Hall Built guys and uh, Cheyenne. We talked a little bit about that. Really a, a rad guy and, and couldn't be more pleased. And then most importantly, coming back to the supporting those who support us. And uh, for this episode, it's going to be AccuAir. The one and only, the leader in air management, CPP, ClassicPerform.com. You've got Dakota Digital, the uh, the owners, makers, and creators of VHX, HDX, and RTX. And then you got got uh, BrothersTrucks.com. So, Accuair, the leader in air management. You know, uh, Sam talked about a little bit. And we see some of the low rider style lowered airbag trucks even at uh, SEMA. I keep saying SEMA, at Barrett. And people are like, well, how do you drive that thing? How do you get it up? Well, get in and let me show you. And uh, it's remarkable what AccuAir has done, especially with their endo system. You know, the compressor's in the tank. You don't have to get the endo. You can go with old school, too. That's what I have on Yellowstone. But uh, I'll tell you what, those compressors kick on, and it's loud. So if you want a little quieter, a little nicer, upgrade yourself to an endo system. Compressor's on the inside. Valves are on the inside. Looks good. Sounds good. Sounds great. And uh, you get that AccuAir performance. So AccuAir.com behind C10 Talk. Always, uh, you know, big supporter of the show and uh, the C10 Nation. So AccuAir, the leader in air management, AccuAir.com. CPP, classic perform. You're looking to lower your truck, static, 4.6. You're looking for some coilover. You're looking for some handling, some steering, some suspension. They got it. They got steering boxes, brakes, big brakes, little brakes. Drop kits, coilovers, modular spindles, classicperform.com. And don't forget, if you use code C10Talk, C10Talk at checkout, you save 10%. That's it. It's easy. So I don't know how many people constantly come up to me, hey, I want to do a 4.6 drop, classicperform.com. And don't forget to use C10Talk because when you do it, you get 10% off. No brainer. How about Dakota Digital, VHX, HDX, RTX, RTX, I think sound stands for retro. It should stand for rad because they look retro. They look like an old setup. They look like an old cluster, but you get the digital response, the digital performance. I've got the VHXs. You know what I love about it is I can toggle through and I can see, you know, from RPMs, I can see, you know, obviously the time, miles per gallon, how much fuel, where my fuel's at. You get that little uh, data center that you get out of the, the gauges. And then you also have the digital with kind of an analog style needle. So you really get the best of both worlds and you get the look. And what's cool about our trucks 
is we want the the shape and the line of the old metal but we're to the point now where you're like dude the market the aftermarket the technology is there so whether it's suspension ride and handling aka cpp or hey how about how does the motor how you know ls guys are ls and like crazy how are we going to look at our vitals and look at our data center where we're going to look at dakota digital it's easy so if you want vhx hdx you want the colors you want to control your phone or you want that retro styling rtx dakota digital.com brothers trucks.com brothers trucks.com supporter of the show huge supporter of the show and uh, they've been business for you know over 20 years now and there's a reason why so you are looking for parts for your 1947 to 87 Chevy or GMC restoration you're looking for patch panels you're looking for interior you're looking for a dash pad you're looking for seat covers you're looking for this you're looking for that lights you name it they got it brotherstrucks.com get on their seasonal mailing list get a seasonal catalog they've got sales all the time from 15 to 65 percent depending on what you're looking at brotherstrucks.com check them out thanks for supporting those that support us how about top 10 c10 have you guys had a chance to get over to c10nation.com c10nation.com check it out you can uh, vote on uh, the top 10 and pick your c10 of the year for 2018 so what we did is reached out to a bunch of the fellas in the scene and said send me your top 10 or 15 trucks all the numbers came back compiled the list of uh, about 40 c10s and then from there we made a list and we kicked it out uh, to you guys so you can go online c10nation.com and you can pick out of the top 10 c10s and then one of those guys the winner will be the c10 of the year the c10 nation c10 of the year 2018 so what we looked at was uh, mid summer kind of a release or debut 17 and then all the way up to SEMA 2018. So you've got a uh, uh, year, a little over a year and a half where you're getting exposed to it. So if something was released in the summer of 18 here and then all the way up to SEMA 19, that can be, uh, you know, looked at as a, as a 2019 C10 for next year. So that's what we're doing. I'm working uh, on a little award with Scott from GSI to create a little C10 Nation top C10 a little C10 Nation, C10 of the Year Award. So get online and uh, check it out. Please take the time to share the pod, rate the pod if you haven't had a chance. Anywhere you listen, rate us. Obviously, iTunes is what we're always telling you to look at. iTunes, get on there and rate us up. Let us know how we're doing. We did add on the website, while you're over there at C10Nation.com, you'll see the little voice recording voicemail thing. You just push a button there, boom, and next thing you know, it'll record you. Let us know how we're doing. Give us a shout out. Let us know who you want to hear from. If you've got a rant, a rave, whatever you want to do, Put it on, uh, put it on wax there. Let us know; it'll come across. If I play the uh, whatever you got to say, whatever you share, if I put it on air and I put it on an episode, then you get a free swag, shirt, hat, whatever you want. So uh, think about that. Leave us a little voicemail. Just kind of uh, want to hear back from you, the C10 Nation, and uh, and keep bringing you the best uh, pod that we can. All right. Don't forget to rate and review us. Let us know what you think. Leave a voicemail. Vote for C10 of the year. Top 10 C10. Boom. I'm out. Have a great week. Stay out of trouble. Do what you do. Late. All right, all right, all right. C10 Nation. Another garage interview. Uh, Was uh, lucky enough to come over to Cheyenne's house. It's crazy how cool people live right around the corner from you, and you don't really realize it. So I reached out to Cheyenne, and you're thinking, Cheyenne, really? Uh, that's right, Cheyenne Lord, which uh, he's the king of the Cheyennes, is one of the things that my buddy Bowman said. But uh, Cheyenne lives just around the corner, reached out to him last year, and uh, the truck, the Sparks Motor Truck, the C10, one of the most famous C10 trucks you'll see on TV. And uh, I reached out to Cheyenne a while back. and was like, do we need to hook up? I knew he was in, you know, the valley in Phoenix, but he's close. And uh, the truck's going to go up to Barrett. So I thought I'd reach out to him and, and make this happen. And Cheyenne was uh, nice enough to do that. So none other than Cheyenne Lord. You can check him out at Lord Racing. That's at Lord Racing. Cheyenne, welcome to C10 Talk, man. Nice. Thanks for having me. I, I'm glad I'm a cool guy. In your in your description, yeah. yeah. Well, dude, I do live close. Well, how about this? Nice. How about this? 
for the C10 Nation. Uh, I've been here since 10.30ish. And it's yeah, like, we done shit and now. it's like two o'clock. So we've been pretty much uh, fucking off the whole time from burnouts. Uh, yeah. Bowman came by. We had the little truck and the Sparks truck. We had it uh, rolling. You yeah, know, the legit up. YouTube channel. Yeah, we got just some, today. We just we we did some burnouts. He shared his burnout spot with me. I shared my burnout spot with him. Now I think my burnout spot is Cheyenne's burnout spot. So no, I, I like yours because it's closer. Well, and we got a demon in the background, and, and the truck is uh, the C10s in the background. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'd say that Cheyenne is definitely a cool guy. We're hanging out, and we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, life. I don't know. We that's the funny thing. We 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 come over to talk about trucks, and we've talked more about life stuff and growing up and where he grew up, where I grew up, the kids, dad life, dad life. But uh, what about the truck life? Let's talk about that. Well, tell tell the C10 Nation who is Cheyenne Lord. Oh shit. Uh, well, it's funny you discovered today with my fire sticker. I was a firefighter in Scottsdale, did that shit for a while, paramedic, uh, got in the mortgage world with everybody. I always tell everybody my, my build up story. Uh, born and raised in Arizona. I didn't tell you, I was born and raised in Cottonwood, an old town. Uh, the house my dad built, delivered by my hippie father. So that's how Arizona I, I am. But, uh, the midwife was late. So my dad just delivered me. I always say this is how it happened. <laughs> Here, bam, here, hit this shit, then push. <laughs> Damn, he's 10 pounds. <laughs> he's giving the puff, puff gift. So mom was feeling good. Dad was feeling good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the old painkiller, right? But, uh, yeah, so born and raised up in Cottonwood, came down here, did the firefight thing. We talked about that all day. And then uh, got in the mortgage stuff, got out of that, Got when that all crashed, got back in the medic world. Was wildland firefighting, got into the air ambulance world that I've been in now for 10 years, long distance transfer type stuff. We'll talk about that if you want. And uh, during that time, I always dreamed of having a C-10. I just wanted one. I had a square body when I was growing up with my dad, had an old yellow beater. Had the best AC ever. Is that so? I bet you people talk about those old square bodies with the AC. I don't know what it was, man. We freeze to death. Now. Yeah. Nothing like that. One, one thing about GM that does get talked about <laughs> is how GM somehow has figured out braking and AC. And, and, and Dodge can't figure out My either. Dad talks about it still. It's like the AC in that square yeah. body. But, yeah, so uh, that I always wanted. My dad had the Apaches and then the square body. So we never had the 67 through 72s. And those were always my favorite. And I always dreamed of having one. And, you know, like everybody else on Craigslist, I was finding when I found my first 69 white you know, barn find six years ago, seven years ago. And that's when I finally, you know, got into that collecting and, and started up. So that was my first one. It was out of Peoria, 60,000 miles. Wow. So pissed I sold it. God, it was like the cleanest one. All these ones, everybody said, oh, man, it's so clean, you shouldn't sell it. All these other garbage. And they're garbage. There's so much junk out there. Yeah, they've been been picked over. Even this one, the, the Diesel Brothers one, had a lot of damage hidden. That I didn't know about, but it was sold to me as an Arizona truck. And uh, once they tore it apart, oh uh, shit, cab damage, all that stuff. Well, I've got uh, I've got one for him to look at. I've been teasing him about because yes. I am I am selling one. So, but uh, <laughs> that might be an episode two point oh with Shameless. Cheyenne. Sell, <laughs> Shameless. Yeah. How the hell? So one thing we were joking about is a boy named Sue. I mean, how was it growing up being named Cheyenne? Seriously. Uh, well, the worst part was hippie parents had blonde hair. And it was like locks of blonde hair. And little girls always be like, you a boy or a girl? And my famous line back was, I'll show you I'm a boy. Yeah. Right. But, uh, yeah. Well, the full name, and I'll tell everybody. Or let me show I, you. I'll tell you my, you don't even know the full name. I didn't even tell you this, yeah. but I don't give a shit. Uh, you gotta be a badass to own this name. So, Cheyenne Renee Lord. <laughs> Dude, did I didn't tell you this? You're gonna die. I, we, okay. C10 Nation. <laughs> okay. My daughter's name. Yeah. No way. It's Cheyenne Renee. <laughs> Is that crazy or what? R E N E? Uh it's R A N. Well, yeah, you have to spell it wrong. Now, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. my my wife so my wife I should know this. My wife, her uh, name is Autumn hilarious. Renee. Her middle name is, is spelled it's it's Ran, so it's R A N. So That's it's R R A N A E right over. I should know this. Cheyenne, don't get mad at me because I don't know how to spell your middle name. <laughs> oh shit! I believe. I'm no, no. I'm trying to think of it. I'm trying to think of it on the spot. But uh, um, so That's my funny. wife's name is Autumn Renee, and then it's Cheyenne Renee. 
Wow. Yeah, how, how crazy That's is that? That's probably bullshit. Oh, dude, we just had a way. moment. We had a bro moment, <laughs> and uh, I, I did it with a boy named Sue. So, yeah, yeah growing up, your funny. name was Cheyenne. What? Why? Why did your parents name you Cheyenne? My, Cheyenne my, Renee, of all things. My dad worked in Hollywood. He worked on the studios, and um, there's old Western, Cheyenne yeah. Western. Yeah. And then he had just heard the name. They heard another kid with the name, some hippies up in Colorado with a son named Cheyenne. So, I don't know. I think that's kind of where it kind of got that Hollywood name. And then the last name, just, you know, whatever. But, yeah, so he worked uh, in the studio. So, I always say that's probably where the, the roots of that kind of that name came from. And my sister's Ashley, Ashley Fern. And she, <laughs> she was even more hippie. But Ashley was pretty rare back then. Yeah. But now, now it's that. But now Cheyenne is, you know, 10-year-old girls or 20-year-old strippers. Yeah. You know, now my buddies in the station, I would say, get your $5, $10 bills out. We got Cheyenne to the main stage. We got Cheyenne Renee. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I had to write my daughter's name, R-A-N-A-E. I had to write it down. There you go. There you go. I'm trying to get out of trouble here. But uh, (laughs) that is pretty crazy. Ashley Fern and Cheyenne Renee. Yeah. Growing up. And uh, you probably, it's cool because that, I do remember that, or Maybe I don't remember it, but I know of the show, and I've seen that old Western. He's a stud, man. Yeah, I've watched was. it. It's actually he's pretty a big son bitch too. Yeah, man. he was a big. Boy. He was like John Wayne before John Wayne. Yeah, but he was like he was jacked. Yeah, like pre steroid jacked. I was like, damn. What well, up? Yeah, they're they're pretty good. Pretty good show, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta imagine you took on some shit you know, growing up. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh I got tons of stories, but yeah, for real, every day, every day, Starbucks day is. Tell them how to spell the name. They always spell it wrong. Nobody, they always, I was telling you earlier, the key on either the first name or the last name, you know. Yeah, oh, Lord. Lord oh, things. Lord. Yeah, one of my buddies told me I should just change my name to just Lord. Lord. Like Madonna. What do you, so one of the things <laughs> I always laugh about playing sports is you, you get called by your last name a lot. Did you oh, get yeah. called by your oh, last yeah. name in the oh, fire always. department? So, hey, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was Lord's. Oh, Lord. Is what they like to say it was oh. for Tracy Lords. <laughs> Us old jammers know who oh, Tracy yeah. You're smiling. Oh, you know. you're having a good time oh, now. Yeah. yeah. The porn star. Yeah. I can see where they <laughs> say up on the main stage is Cheyenne yeah. Lords. Yeah. So that that would always be at Lords. I'm like, idiot. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that was. Uh, and that fire was guys can be part. ruthless. Oh, they find any little thing. Yeah. Any any kink in your armor. But you and if you show it, it it's, you it's, it. it's full. Yeah. It's full rain. It's like, oh, we got him now. <laughs> we got him. But yeah, so yeah, every day, man. That's the that's the name, that's the conversation. And my my girlfriend's Delaney, so when we go get coffee or something, it's always nice to say some normal name. Like my dad's is Don, so I'll just go by Don. Don, Don. Yeah. yeah. But it's just funny to see how they spell it or whatever. If I don't want to have a five minute conversation yeah. about Cayenne or oh yeah, yeah. Cayenne. They, they do it. With my yeah. daughter too. And it's crazy now. To, we're sitting here looking at the truck. I mean. Now your name is on the truck, you know, so <laughs> it's obviously a Cheyenne, but a your surprise. name is on the on the truck, so that's that, pretty cool. That was a surprise by uh, Dave Sparks. Yeah, and your name is tattooed on my arm. I know, I know, and it's Cheyenne Renee. You're a big fan. <laughs> you are a big fan. Naming your daughter after me, one hundred percent. Glad you changed the spelling of Renee a little bit. I didn't know you were a super stalker. Oh, that's dude. cool. Yeah. That's cool. You thought I didn't know you the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. Why do you think I moved so close? All your clippings. <laughs> all your, your browser history. We got the same haircut. Yeah. That's yeah, good. ball. Yeah. You're my hero, man. So you uh, you and Big Don, I mean, you're still pretty tight with the old man or what? Oh, yeah. We're real close. Is so. he still up there in Cottonwood? Yeah, he's 75. My mom's 67. They've been up there for 40-something years, the house that you know, I said he built. And they're still up there. They got a couple of shitty dogs. And so did you grow up in Cottonwood? Yeah. Went to Mingus High School up there. Uh, came down, went to Glendale Community and uh, Yavapai College. So got my fire science degree at Yavapai College. Central got my, Yavapai. Yeah. Paramedic stuff through degree through Scottsdale when I went through the academy with Rural Metro. And uh, yeah, those are, that's the only school I did. Yeah. That uh, fuck school. So... He's talking a little bit about the fire department. That's, you know, going back like 20 years ago, we both got into this fire service at the same time. Yeah, totally. And then some things happened in your life, but you're a, you're a very successful businessman. I mean, you're a very successful businessman, and uh, and you're one of those guys where you work really hard. And like you said, maybe I don't have the education, mm-hmm. which is we could probably go on a tangent about education mm-hmm. in a piece of paper. But uh, what yep. you do now, you you've kind of... Taking your experience with the paramedic world, now you do air ambulance. You're transporting people all over the world. Yep. You have a company. We well, have a couple companies. You have Charity Air. Yep. 
And then you have your uh, air ambulance billing company. Yeah, that's the that's the primary. Charity air is like the marketing piece, right? So if I market myself with the billing stuff, it's it's a very limited market. So I bill for a lot of guys cross country. Um, and then we do transfers ourselves. So a lot of the stuff we do is uh, North America with Charity Air Ambulance. Uh, you know, we do Latin America stuff too. So, you know, I would say the two things I would say, you're here in Arizona and uh, you need a transplant or something happens. And instead of moving to Oregon to you, we'll move you up to like Rochester, Minnesota. There's no other way you're going to go. You can't go by ground, can't go by helicopter. You got to go by jet. So the jets are totally outfitted for ambulance inside. And you get a paramedic, maybe a, 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 another a nurse or a airway tech or something like that, right? So then uh, you fly up and do long distance stuff. And then um, another scenario is if every cruise ship, let's say ports in Mexico, every single time, 3,000 people on board, there's somebody that has to be transferred back to the U.S. There's somebody sick at every port that has to be disembarked, go to the local terrible hospital, and then ship back to Miami or Dallas or wherever, right? So we network really well. We get those transfers back. Yeah, or they find us online. So are your jets uh, equipped and you have them all over? And you, I just you use the lease? network. Okay. I just use the network. So it's like single lease agreement. Sometimes we'll lease them out for longer periods of time if we're going to do a hot route, right? So I'm working on some stuff down south. We'll get a hot route going, and then I'll lock, some, I'll lock up a plane for, for the season, and I'll put it down where I want it, and then it's going to be quick, accessible, Got to put crews. I mean, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of network. It's really that whole network that you yeah. built, the communications, and then how do you move it, right? So the way we move it is through Charity Air. Charity Air is like, for me, I was doing a ton of free flights for people. Like, our, my motto has always been, you know, prove to people what you, what you can do. Give them the work, and then they're going to pay you, right? So what we found is in our industry, a lot of these things don't get paid for. So if you got hurt right now, and you're in Mexico, let's say you're partying at Rocky Point, yeah. right? They're going to ground you from Rocky Point up to the border, and then they're going to helicopter you from the border over to Tucson. That's a terrible thing. So we had a hot route down there for a while where we were just flying people, put station to plane, and just flying direct out fixed wing. But you got to pay it, pay the local Lambos to do that because they're making a thousand bucks to drive to the border. So you got to pay them to do it. It gets real dirty, you know. Down in Mexico, it's legal, but it's kind of the way it is. So um, if you if you needed something like that, the insurance is going to tell you to you know fuck off. Well, yeah. and for the audience, growing up here in Arizona, for both of us, we know, uh, especially our generation, a lot of people go to Mexico. They go to Rocky Point. It's just south. <laughs> yep. They have a good time. Yep. It's no different. To probably put it in perspective for a lot of people out there, you probably heard of Tijuana or TJ. Yep. People go down there. If you listen to you know the the story about Nacho, uh, you, you you know people go down to Mexico. And, um, I mean, you're paying attention to the local news. Mexico's fun, but Mexico doesn't do things the way that we do things here. Not even close. And a lot of people go down to Mexico, usually on three-wheelers and four-wheelers, and they get drunk, get and they fucked. have a good time, and they get fucked up. Uh, my brother-in-law, same thing. He yoked his leg. They, they race him up to the border, and then there's a helicopter sits at the border. And it Hopefully can't, a helicopter. Oh, well, yeah. And then, then they go to Tucson Medical, right, and, yep. uh, and kind of go from there. So Hours. You, yeah. Hours added. And, you know, we talk about stuff that we do in the U.S. I mean, you know how fast it is. I mean, minutes. We'll call your guys right now. They're going to be here in a minute. I mean, it's it's hours of time. And and then the, the health care you're getting down there is never good enough. So insurance is going to say, oh, you're fine. You're stable. You're in a hallway in a terrible clinic. You know, they don't, get, they don't care. So what we really started doing, why I created Charity Air, was like, we're your, your representative. And we're, we've done so well that I have the funds that we pay for people. So these flights can cost 10, 20, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollars cash up front just to move a plane. And then what we do we're successful is because I have the billing side, we'll then build the insurance and get what we need back from insurance. So we may not get paid on five of them. We get paid on one and that pays for all the other transfers we've done. So that's kind of what I created with the charity. We built that pot up. And then we do enough transfers, enough insurance will pay eventually on a certain amount of them. And it's built a, a pretty big, you know, fund to keep moving on its own energy now. And uh, it's incredible, man. I mean, we're flying people all, every month. We're flying kids, you know, uh, babies born on the wrong side of the planet, you know, need to get back home. Um, a lot, like we'll do ones where, uh, you know, they have a surrogate mother. 
and the, and the mother was in California, and they're going to come out, they're going to get the babies, they're going to be born, you know, on time, but then they're preemies, right? So then they're, they're born now, they're the new parents, and the new parents live in Michigan. Yeah. But it was born in California. And they like, dude, we, we can't be parents now. The mother is gone because it's not the, you know, they adopted the kids, yeah. right? Or the surrogates, right? So it has nothing to do with the mom anymore. So now these parents live in Michigan. They can't come get their child because they're preemie. So we got to put them in a plane, fly them out, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, you know, outfitted plane for that and get them back to their parents. So the insurance will say, oh, they're fine. Just leave them there. Well, you know, bankrupt the family trying to transfer back and forth. They can't work. So that's where we come in and say, you know, fuck you, insurance. We'll, we'll do what we want. Well, we'll what, a great, what a great way to give back, too, right? Oh, 100%. It comes from that same vein that you come from. You know, it's cheesy, but, you know, why are you a firefighter? Why'd you start? Yeah. Like, we wanted to help people. We saw something in there where we could help people, and it's a good, honest way to make money. It's a good, honest living. And I think, you know, our the money we make it can get pretty tainted. Like, you can get, go down the wrong path and get pretty selfish with it. And I've seen those companies come and go. And they, but a company like mine, man, we just longevity is just built into our DNA because we just give back. Well, I think giving back and, you know, not to get too crazy off onto a business tangent, but you right. do look at people when they give back, giving back is good for the business, good for people, it's good for the community. There's nothing bad with it. Yeah. I can never give enough away. Honestly, every time it comes back a hundredfold. Good. You know, it's a Christian attitude that comes from me. It's the way I was raised, but it goes so much further than that. You know, I mean. You could talk about it all day till you're blue in the face, but once you're once you're faced with that kind of money, then what are you going to do with it? That's the real test. Well, your name is Lord. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's meant to, to be, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's meant to, to be. It's good. I have to. So, how does for the you know obviously we're a podcast on trucks. How how did you and this truck that we're looking That's at? How, how did this thing? How did this thing come about? So you were a C10 guy. You had the the white C10. You mm-hmm. always wanted a 6772. You yeah. sold it. Uh, yeah. you're doing good in business. How did yeah. you end up hooking up with the Diesel Brothers and get this truck on TV? Oh, geez. So I'd say two, three Jack and Cokes. I watched That's the it? show for the first time. That was it. I was sitting by myself. Yeah, I drink Jack by myself. And I emailed them through their like channel. I'm watching you. Remember, I'm your stalker. So I yeah, see you what you saw, drink. You yeah, saw yeah, I saw that shit yeah, go yeah. down. So you saw me email. Three fingers. You should come hang out. And drink Dude, them, I love man. some. I, I love some gym though. A gym. I'm a gym guy. Oh god, yeah, that's yeah. a big difference right there. Oh man. All right, at least we found something. Okay. We found something. So, I emailed them. It kicked through the main Discovery Channel email, I guess. I found this all out later, and then it bounced over to the manager, and he and I, you know, I don't. It was a humble brag. Like I had to tell him. Yeah, hey, I know you probably get bombarded by bullshit. Like. I got 20 grand. I'm going to sell my dad's truck. Can you guys do it? You know, probably stuff like that. I would, they were into their second season, I think. And so I emailed them right about that time. And second season hadn't totally aired yet. And so it may have been still the first season. So uh, Hans, the the shop manager, called and said, hey, if you're for real, man, we're, we'd like to meet you. And so I showed him my Instagram. It was pretty big at the time. And, um, you know, I said, hey, I got 100 grand easy for a bill. Like, I'm no joke. I'm going to build it. I want to build it in my charity name. You can build a charity truck. It's going to help you with your brand. Do a charity build. It kind of changed over a year, you know, of two years of building the truck. But, uh, you know, so after that time, flew out within a few days and uh, met with um, Dave, the main shop guy and owner. He owns Sparks Motors, too, there. And uh, within 30 minutes, we shook on it and had an idea for the show. He had never done anything that clean. You know, I warned him, hey, this is going to be a real clean thing. These C10 guys are, like, they know their shit. Like, these body lines got to be right. Uh, body work's got to be good. You know, whatever we do, it's got to be, it's got to be good quality. Because what you're doing right now is rough stuff. Like, you guys are throwing a diesel into an old Jeep or into an old Dodge, you know, a 12, 12 out, whatever you're doing. So, uh, it's gotta be clean. So it's a whole nother, oh yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I was like, okay, man. You know? And so we started a hundred grand for the build and it was just going to be, uh, off the shelf chat. Uh, no, we were going to keep the same chassis, just box it. Uh, Duramax the whole time was going to be a Duramax. So you knew all the way I wanted a Duramax. Yep. And they didn't know anything about our world. So I had to tell them, you know, the, the interior, the, the, the Willwood 14s, like all the stuff that we're doing, right? So I had to like ride them a whole list when I got home. Showed them all the stuff, where to go to buy it. 
And then hands worked a lot. The shop manager calling, trying to get a uh, trade out, like on sponsored. Mm-hmm. So some guys said, okay, cool. We'll give you free parts for mentioning us on the show. So I think they did all right with that. Uh, but they were so new, you know, and that's kind of why I think I got in because they're real new. They didn't, they weren't now. I mean, you could blast them all day, but you get this truck. I'm going to be quarter million dollars yeah. all day long. Well, like, it's crazy to hear talk. that. Like some of the stuff that I think for, for the, the audience in the C10 Nation is pretty common knowledge, but you go back and think, hey, these guys are pigeonholed into their diesel world. Maybe right. they didn't know some of the C10 light duty stuff, yep. and then now they shift gears and yeah. they and they see what goes on. And you're kind of you know being the the, the control guy. It's like, no, no, this is how we want oh, to do totally, this. Totally, totally. And I wouldn't have thought that, right? Because yeah. and TV is what TV is. Maybe, maybe right. more than meets the eye. Right, right. Yeah. So. He had to surround himself like a good business owner like myself. He surrounds himself with people that do things better than you, right? So he had Joel with Overkill Racing Chassis come in midway, I think. He had, uh, you know, PZ Fab there and some other guys that, that were good, good quality guys. Uh, there are other guys that, that work in there were great too, but you know, more, more wrenchers, you know, these guys are like sheet metal guys and he's a chassis guy and they're like, Hey, let me rewind. This is a year into it. I shipped the truck up within a month, two months. So you had to find the truck? It was my truck. I bought it here in Arizona. Okay. There's pictures online. Yeah, yeah. So. It's like I saw the one that and was like a GMC blue and bed. a white, white bed. And- a cut bed. Okay, yeah. But it was an original short bed. I can tell you now the only thing that's original on the truck is this 916th of the cab. <laughs> the A and the 1B pillar. The A that's and 1B? It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So... uh so yeah, they I shipped it up and then man they sat on it because they just they kind of skyrocketed at the time. So Discovery came in, dumped a lot of money on them. Uh, they started shooting bigger stuff. Uh, uh, MLB picked them up, so they were shooting stuff with MLB on those episodes. So I got lost in the mix. I'm just like a now I'm just you know their quotes you know this this rich guy that like threw money at them. They don't really know me that well, and uh, they know I'm pretty. I was pretty laid back because I knew if I let it go. It did take some time. I wasn't pushed. Like, I didn't care. But I wanted it done. Do you, you think know? they knew you were as much of a car guy, automotive guy as you are? Uh, yeah, yeah, because they saw my Instagram. My Instagram at the time, that one before I changed it over to Charity Air, was big. I had all my stuff on there. Like, now I have Lord Racing, but I'm just kind of doing that small, you know, boost it a little bit, you know. But and you had Ponies Blazer cool. before, right? Oh, yeah, that, that helped too. Yeah, I had Ponies Blazer, which was sick. That uh, 72 with a 67 clip and... Uh, and Paula Dash. Roadster. Oh, they So for the audience, Polly or Polly Pony. Pony is um what's his auto glass finish? He's in NorCal there. Yep. He's got mm-hmm. the red uh GMC and then the yep. black this is a black Does Roadster. He still have the red one? Does yeah, yeah, it was at SEMA this year. Oh nice. I think he's selling it. I think I, wa- I want it. I actually think it might be at Barrett. I don't know. He I think he might be selling it. Um, but, uh, this is the black, uh, you've probably seen it. Uh, I think it might've been on truck and I don't think it was street trucks. I'll post it on my Instagram. I'll do yeah. an old video. I haven't, I haven't put that one on there. The video? I haven't put the video or a picture of it on my Instagram. I'll put it on there. It, it was it's one of those, uh, Roadster Blazers that you've seen Roadster Blazers, but this one kind of, not only you don't see many, you right. see, and then you see this one and then this one took, let, let's say there's five of them or a half dozen of them. This one instantly becomes number one. And then it raised the bar from, you know, 10 to, this is a, a 15 or a 20 on a scale of 1 to 10. Oh, yeah, totally. And uh, on those, you know, the K5s and stuff, they have that notch, right, for the removable top. Yeah. So he sheet metal the whole thing. It was even all the way around. So that's how you really know. When you're looking at those and they have, they, she, they took the time to sheet metal that, make it even, uh, then you know. You're How'd like, you end up getting, all, getting that blazer? Barrett. Oh, really? You I have- saw it and I always wanted it. I thought that was the most amazing blazer. And I'm dicking around a Barrett, and it, there it is. And my other buddy posted it, and I was like, I gotta go see it. And uh, met him, and he's like, Yeah, it's going on Thursday night. It was, it's a good night because Friday, Saturday goes crazy. Yeah. And so. Good night for you. Good night for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was like handing out flyers, you know, trying to get as much, you know. You're busy. taking them away? Yeah. And I, and, I, and I had it, and I was ready to go to 100. I think I got it at like 60. Yeah, which but is, I was a, which is a bargain. Oh, dude. And he didn't care because it was all free money. Those guys build those and it's all sponsored. Yeah. Right? So they build them, you know, they don't provide much of their own other than the labor, right? And then he goes to SEMA and then they all get race line wheels and all get their promotions from SEMA. And they're on that truck that's popular and that's the way they make it. And then he gets to sell the truck. 
And it's all profit for him at that point. And it was a beautiful... I, I want to say, for some reason, I'm thinking it was trucking. It was on trucking. It's been yeah. shot. It, yeah, was it was on the on cover of Grindr, magazine. Grinder. Grinder did a shoot yeah. on it. And uh, it's... Did you have a name for that? Or did he have a name that came with it? Uh, I think it was, it was like Pony's Blazer. Pony, Pony. Pony's yeah. Roaster, yeah. 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 Now, why'd you sell that? Dude, honestly, I like to drive my shit. So, you know, I have a lot of stuff. That's why I feel bad about this one. It's been in the garage. But I've been, you know, working on it. But, um... I like to drive it. So if you got all time convertible, you know, roadster, I can't go to the movies. I can't go to the bar. You know, I don't really go to the bar with any of them because, you know, whatever. But uh, you can't go anywhere. You can't go to the grocery store. The last time I drove that, I got stuck in an in and out drive through where there, you couldn't get out and the fan stopped working <laughs> and I fucking overheated and I was just freaking out. The horn doesn't work. I'm like, Move the fuck out of the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, height heats up to 260, you know, sorry, new owner. And uh, heated it up, boiled over in the parking lot. I'm like, God, you know, sitting there for a half hour. Yeah, what are the odds? But yeah, so that's like, you know, that was like one of my first and last lessons in that car. It was just like I couldn't drive it. I couldn't enjoy it. Uh, it did rub. It was a SEMA build. Yeah. You know, they're not R&D'd out. Like this is r and the, the shit that I sell is the best stuff because... I'll get it from a SEMA build, right? Or Barrett, or is this running okay? And then I put a whole brand new engine, tranny, driveline, like in the Chevelle I'm selling, and this thing with the tranny and some stuff. So, you know, the R&D of a year or so is what you really need is to buy a good vehicle. And I put all the damn money and time in it. Now I get so burned out on my car also. Do you like that facet of it? Do you like being the, uh, cause you, there is a part whether or not you you're like. the middleman, you're the second guy. And then you do some shakedown and figure out, Oh, this is not right. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I can't leave it. I can't leave it. You know, like, uh, the Chevelle I have, uh, you know, kind of grind to the third. I had to pull it out, put it, rebuild the tranny and whatnot, you know, but you know, and that's the way it was sold to me, but I didn't know better the, to not, uh, uh, take it back in and, and, and bitch about it. I just, I just took it on the chin and fixed well, it. Well, and you so. kind of said, that, you know, the C10, you've worked on it. Yeah, there's, and I don't really blame them that much. I mean, everybody knows when you go this radical on, like, these vehicles, I mean, like I said, dude, there's nothing original about that truck. Every single thing was hand-built. So the fact that it actually rolled and ran and drove, I mean, that's a that's a monumental, you know, achievement. So to, to, to expect it to roll off a trailer and not have any problems – Everybody listening is going to know that's ridiculous. I mean, they know what their shade tree stuff they're doing all day, and they're going to have issues with overheating and all those other things. So when you're putting down a thousand horsepower in a diesel that's putting out, you know, almost double that torque, I mean, come on. I mean, you're going to have problems. So I, I'm not that pissed about, you know, some of the stuff that was left undone. But, you know, I also know he spent a ton of money in that, you know, and it, what I paid for it at the end of the day. Remember, I said I got it at 100, and then I went up to 30k because I wanted to go from 600 to 800, 900 horsepower. Yeah. So that was like a whole different level. So that was the deal. You want to go? You went over yeah. from 100 to a buck 30. Yeah, yeah. So that's when we got to that point. Um, and you know it was more. Oh, <laughs> all easy 100 more, yeah. easy. Because I mean, the guys he had to pay to come in to finish it. That's where we're kind of we're going with that conversation where, you know, the level of c10 guys and the sheet metal work that it needed to get to this point i mean none of this guy's in the shop i mean there's some great guys there but you know how it is i mean that that high level i mean like they, they could have never done that chassis without overkill without joel there they would have never well i feel like that's kind of where i feel like i either interse- intersected it or it uh it, it became more popular as once joel and overkill and the angle brothers right once they started kind of posting pictures of the truck and the build probably, you know, obviously oh, totally. pre, pre show. Yeah. Then we're Sneaking like, out. we're yeah. like, Oh damn. Yeah. Like damn yeah. son, what are they yeah. building over there? Yeah. Totally. And then we see it. And then the totally. angle brothers and overkill and what Joel did. And I'm totally. sure I would assume that they were a lot like you where once Joel gets a little bit of like leeway, then they just went crazy on that. Oh, thing. he had to be tuned back a lot. I'm sure he's like, he's a good dude. Like he's like us, like, you're not going to sell a junk. You're going to sell something knowing. And if you do, you're going to tell the guy, hey, look, tranny's slipping. Like, you got issues, right? You get to buy it that way. That's fine. But, you know, or I can fix it for you. You know, that's the way he is, too. So he had the time. And, you know, Dave's busy. So Joel was on my side, man. Like, 
all the little Easter eggs he put in there, like all the different like machine work and all the different little things he hid in there was my request. Like if you look up and you get it up on a lift, you'll see all these little things that, that he did where he had a good ass time, like, you know, machining out certain things. He had, you know, the plasma cutter and you know, for all his metal work. How involved were you as a, as an owner, not builder while the TV, while overkill, when you talk about some of the fun, some of the little eggs and jewels that Joel was able to put in. Was not much. Not, not much. much. Yeah, like they would call me every so often. Uh, do you want paddle shifters? Right? So I was like, oh, paddle shifters would be dope. It doesn't really kind of match the truck. So I'd really be hesitant on paddle shifters with your dash. And then they were creating the dash. Let me just kind of tell you too. So I put in that email. About a year took to build it. During that time, they built me a Denali, a big 12-inch lifted Denali. For whatever reason, sorry, Eric, the producer, if he hears this or not, they always have the bullshit storylines. So some of them are right. You know, I'm real. Obviously, the truck was built for me. It was mine. There was a lot of real story to it. But like that Denali, there's a black Denali at the end of season two. That was mine 100% the whole time. We bought it at auction. We went and found it. And uh, they did it. Well, they loved it because they didn't want to give me too much airtime. I had an original story to do two C10s. And they're like, oh, it's too much airtime. I was like, okay, well, in the meantime, I wouldn't mind the big lifted truck, you know, old firefighter style, like, you know, big lifted, you know, little dick truck. So I said, give me one of those. They're like, okay, what was well, the last part? The, the little dick truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do have some guys who have some big ass truck. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you know, big old Denali with a, oh, yeah. you know, worked over. So uh, they built me that. Well, Eric, the producer, liked it. So they put it in the show. Like, well, we can't give it to you. It can't be your truck. So too they, much airtime. Too much airtime. So they bullshitted and had some girl come on and buy it. And I think that was Keaton, uh, uh, the Muscles' uh, friend. So, I mean, who cares now? I think I don't think they really care. But well, I don't give a speaking shit. of little dick, I mean, it's right. all, it all works out. <laughs> exactly. It all works out. Whoever exactly. gets it at the end doesn't exactly. matter, right? And then I sold it just recently to a five foot two girl. She bought it. I was like, oh, my God. Like, you, okay. And she drove it. She drove a big truck. So. But, yeah, so that was built for me. So... That was cool. I bought that from them, and then I uh, uh, loved that truck and had a good time. But during that time, all these other builds came in. MLB came into them, and they started throwing all these big shows at them. And so mine just had more issues than they thought. Like So the cab was jacked up, so they had to get another truck from uh, uh, Hans, the shop manager. His family has a dope-ass junkyard up in Ohio, uh, Idaho, and uh, they got hundreds of trucks up there. So he went and got one, drug it back, cut that panel, and put it on there. In the show, they bullshit it, act like they found it in Utah, which they didn't. And so, uh, so yeah, so there was like a lot of work. And uh, I go there to get the truck a year later, the big truck, and this truck is not even close to being done. So Dave felt bad, uh, Sparks, and said, listen, Joel's here now. I can do a crazy chassis. Check the 66 out that he did with a big blown motor. You want to do this with the truck? I said, go for it. But I'm not, I don't want to spend any more money. You know, I'm fine with the original idea. He goes, no, no, I'll cover all that cost. Big mistake. Famous last words. Big mistake on his end. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, so he felt bad, you know. And so he went all crazy and let Joel go crazy on that chassis. And you see a fraction of the work that they did. Man, they had like, they had three full shows, not three half shows that they could have shown on that truck. So that was one thing, interacting and talking to the Angle Brothers at SEMA. Oh, we, yeah. we tried to get them as a, on an interview for my pre-SEMA uh, build episodes last year for SEMA 2017. Right. And um, that was one thing that I think the audience, maybe because Overkill and the Angle Brothers and Cold Art, you know, there was enough stuff that leaked through social media, which I'm right. sure all TV has to kind of combat. Deal that. Yeah. But, but yeah. to me... I was amazed at how little of the build and the stuff oh, that they did show. Right. Yeah. Oh, so well, you talked to them while they were still building it. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we, right. As it was kind of getting ready and they're building it, and I'm like, okay, let's get a let's get a pre-interview going, and then it just you know, but but I think even the amount that was leaked out that uh, we could see right. that when you do watch the show, which I don't really watch the show, I do see it right. sometimes. I did specifically make sure I watched this one. Right. right. Your your reveal, if you will, right, right, right. It, it just wasn't as much about the build, which I don't know what sells. I'm not a TV producer. I'm not Eric. I'm not one of these guys right. that says you have to show right. this. Right. It was pretty crazy from an audience perspective of the amount that we didn't get to see, and 
again, I don't know if that leaves people wanting more and then now we get to see the truck. I, I don't know. I just know that what I did see on social media, maybe it's a good balance. We get, we get to see some social media and then we get to see the TV ending and you're like, oh shit, that's all that we got to see? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, they, they, I think they're really missing out. Discovery, you know, they're TV, right? And we all know YouTube is it. Like that, our generation, what we want, we want to lay in our bed, watch watch videos all night, and go to sleep to that. Like that's what we do. I mean, I do it too. I still have direct TV. I don't even know why. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think that was like they could do a whole. And I told Eric, I said, you have so much shit canned on this. If you guys just snipe together an hour video, you get a million views. I think like of all the dope ass shit that went on in this build, they have a, they have cans of cans of stuff. Yeah. And I begged them to do it. I haven't talked to them in a while. You know, just create a YouTube. A, a, a video or something, splice something together. Um, but I think, you know, they're, they're, they're over, it. you know, they're on to the next and that's kind of the way it is. Wouldn't it be cool too, if you could have like some, some dude who's just scraping away in mom's basement, mom, give me some meatloaf. <laughs> and and he could get a hold of some of that film oh, that yeah. they still have. that will never get used in right, right. the archives of life. It'll get, but, but if he could put it together and create an right. hour long YouTube Sparks yeah. would get it, Discovery would get it, sure, that kid would sure. get it, you'd right, get it, right, right, because right. we know it all exists. Oh, yeah, people, it's out there. Realistically, people want to see the real shit. Oh, I, oh, I was left for it, too. Yeah. I, so I so so now we fast forward. So another months and months go by, and it still hasn't been done. And, uh, you know, I did all my, my little clips and stuff for the first two episodes of the three-episode series. You know, here, like, shooting the bullshit, you know, videos and stuff to keep the, keep the storyline going. Um, where I was involved, but I really wasn't. Um, they just kind of, we'd talk on the phone, go over a few little uh, design ideas. So, you know, then come final episode, you know, they, they had just kind of rushed it. And like, dude, this is done. We've got to be done. I mean, that was the whole energy of the whole shoot. So when I flew up there and did my whole thing, um, you know, the truck wasn't working. First day, it wasn't working. Tranny, tranny blowing out some fluid. I don't know what it was doing. Probably that line, some other stuff. Um, so it just wasn't working. So, I mean, they had scrapped for 12, 14 hours straight, just getting that thing running. Uh, the suspension still needed more tweaking. So we shot the show and, uh, you know, had a little bit of power, but it wasn't tuned right. It wasn't, it, the, the suspension wasn't tuned yet, you know, and that's and so why I, I don't bust her balls. I mean, it sucked that it wasn't, but looking back at it, I don't, blame, I mean, it sucks. I mean, that much R and D to create brand new style suspension. I mean, that had just been invented. I mean, patent pending was on, you know what I mean, on the, on the shit. So th- there's not much to go behind the suspension. The, the engine builder was no longer with them. So they had a new tuner that had come in on somebody else's build, right? So uh, he didn't even know. I mean, he had to go look at, you know, old blueprints on yeah. what was done to it. So that and the tranny was swapped out last minute because the Allison was too big. So they went with the, the Dodge 47. And, uh, you know, there's like a lot that happened. It was just like, let's get this damn thing done. Let's shoot the, let's shoot it. And, you know, and I had the plane up there. So I had, I had, you know, $10,000 worth of burn time on a plane. Like, come on, let's get this thing done. Yeah. So we, we did it. We canned it and they made the best of it. But I saw, so I was like, dude, you got to show some post build videos of this thing. Um, cause like you, like me, like everybody else listening, like we, that's a, that's my favorite part is the build. I mean, I think we all do it. Like, we build shit, and then what do we do? Fucking sell it. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, eh, it's kind of over. There's a lot of guys that are just builders. You know, yeah. they want to just build it, look at it. And one oh. thing we talk about is we love that metal. We're looking at the truck. We love the lines. Oh, wow. But I tell you what, man, when you're looking at that chassis and those big hoops, and you're looking at the motor yeah. and the power plant, and, yeah. and it's sitting there, and the body hasn't covered it up yet, yeah. that, that's something that's very sexy. Oh, that's my favorite part. Yeah. Oh, when it was raw? Yeah. Oh, and they put that front clip on when they created that clip, which is sick. I can't, it needs to be blueprinted and made. Like that front hood where the way they redid that hood, they got rid of those shitty lines on C10s. Because, you know, it's like a fucking Lego piece yeah, up yeah. On, the, on the cowl on the top. Um, that was brilliant on their part. And that was like a last minute thing. That's what Ingle or Cole are, you know. But again, that's how much time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. So why do you think that being a C10 guy, when they you know, looked at doing the chassis and you talked about some of the patent pending. Why wouldn't they kind of go with something that's possibly already existing? Cause there's a lot of chassis companies out right, there. Right. Oh, totally. Because, uh, something new and unique. Yeah. I mean, they wanted to hit it out of the park. I really think they did. 
I mean, I re, I've already needed it and got it to where it needs to be now. But, I mean, hydraulics, never been seen. Diesel in that truck on TV still hasn't been done, not really been seen. I mean, I'm one of the worst. I don't watch a ton of new stuff, so you probably know more. I know of other 12 valves, C10 out there now that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, of this level, you've seen it up close. I mean, how good the body work and everything's done on it. Um, they're just not out there. You're right. They're not. They're not. When you could, especially when you put it all together. With and the tube chassis. Yeah. Tube chassis with the hydro. With that's the, what it was. You know, it was just fucking straight up C10 porn, chassis porn, uh, different suspension porn. Like all that stuff that we all look for. There's nothing about it that's kind of normal other than the the 14 inch Willwoods, the 22 inch rims. We've seen that's tubbed, but even the tubs are off of a off a diesel truck, like a big rig. Yeah, big know? rig. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's kind of cool too. It kind of put a little of their flavor in it. Well, it sounds like you're really pretty cool with knowing that when you do so many special things, you know, the tube chassis, the hydro, yeah. the the Duramax, everything from the turbo. Yeah. That when you do all those things realistically can it be when it's the first when it's the first five yeah. you're only going to get better with time and there's going to be monkeys oh. that are going to present themselves totally. and gremlins and so many things and and totally. whether or not we realize that from the audience on tv no. sometimes you're just like there's a lot of problems yeah yeah oh everybody's begging for burnouts you know so you know i got the truck and you know dave and i kind of had a little it sucked because i wanted him to, to cover some of the cost of of the the repairs i had to do but but at this point it's like I got it. Looking at it, I, I didn't want to get in a big argument about covering some of the costs that I had to do once I got it, because I know he had a ton of costs into it too. You know, it, it just—it's not the way I do business, but I get it, right? Like I probably would have owned it, I would have eaten it, I would have you know paid for it at, if I was in his shoes. But I get it on his end. He spent a ton of money, way more than one hundred thirty. You know, their money's made in the TV show. So, right. for the audience, just because Cheyenne's alluded to that off air, right. within reason, right? You can put the pieces of the puzzle, speaking of Legos, together. Mm-hmm. Is is Dave says, hey, I got it. Let's do it this way. He, he eats it. He covers it. You get the truck, and you've already put a different tranny in it. Well, rebuilt that Or tranny. rebuilt that tranny. Yeah. Yeah. And there's been a lot of things that you've done yeah. so that we could go out and do a burnout. And, yeah, and totally. make it back home, which we just did. And the truck. Yeah, it's not puked all over the driveway, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like that. You know, so, like, let's say, like, the pulleys, all the, all the pulleys, all, all the front uh, accessories, right? So, all those brackets are handmade, right? They're all cut on a laser cutter and everything else put on there. Well, it was a little too thin. That much torque bent them all in. So, then I had to have a thicker gauge made, redone all the brackets, right? All handmade, you know, stuff. I, I'm never going to bash on Joel. And those guys, you know, and, and, and the way the bugs that they had to work out for months before I even got delivered, right? After SEMA last year. And the show shot way before that. So I'll never bash on them because I know how much work goes into those. Yeah. It just I didn't want to eat the cost on it, but after a while I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all right. I mean I really think it fair. I'll 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 get my money back out of it. And you know, it was a great experience. I'll have some good videos and some cool shit like we're doing, you know, that's kind of what you're left with. And I'm happy with that. I'm cool. If I bring some attention to Charity Air and I bring some attention to that the stuff that I'm doing, then, then mission accomplished. It was a fun ride. And I'm never I can see Dave today shake him in the hand, you know, shake his hand, look him in the eyes and say, It's cool, man. I don't care. But yeah, so I had to do the tranny. Um the tranny guys would totally warrant you, but I didn't want to ship it back up to Utah, so I just had it done local. Uh you know, I could probably could have sent it back up to the shop and Joel would have redone those brackets, right? But I just had them done here local at TMW, done down there at the he does the razor stuff around. Yeah. Him. So, you know, uh, what else? The Oh, the hydraulic stuff. They found that the seals were bad. Finnegan's doing the same stuff. Uh, and he he mentioned it on his show. We found out in those old pumps, the seals would go bad. So we have new pumps now that hold the seals. So literally, it will sit now. They warrant you. They sent us all brand new parts. It's cool. And, uh, and that's all the Miller Brothers stuff, yeah, right? Exactly. So those guys, they, they were at SEMA, you know, and Dell, Dell had that at LST, and and right. that's that's cool shit. But it's all again, it's it's brand it's new, brand new stuff. Brand where new. whether or not you get two, three years, or two, three, you know, twenty C tens R and D, it's just well, sh- think about all the airbag shit. Like yeah. how much stuff had to go through for them to work that out to have a product now that doesn't come back in a few months, 
and half of them have problems with the quality of whatever that work is. Well, doing. and how many kids did airbag stuff with old school car wash, semi stuff, totally. and they've, you know, rigged it up so many different ways. So, totally. you know, the totally. forums wouldn't exist if it wasn't for all these problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I live and die on this forum. Yeah. For sure. But we have something like this, you know, but those guys, every single one of them owned it and they all, every single truck guy that was involved in it would own it and come over here and work on it. I just said, you know, I'll just take care of it. It's no big deal. You know, well, it's cool because you, you have the means to do that. So you True. not only have the right attitude about it, but yeah. you have the means to do it where if it was, I don't know, I, yeah. I wouldn't have the means to even do that, you know, with yeah. the truck itself. But let's say you, you scratch, you get all, you, you get your 100,000 down, mm-hmm. you, get, you know, you know that there's going to be problems a little bit more, you know, 10%, 20%, and then you get it and you're like, I'm stuck with this thing and I can't, do, I can't even drive it, you know? Oh, it's like, you know, I, I loved older Mercedes and always looked at old Ferraris and Lambos, right? Well, if you buy like a Gallardo that has a, doesn't have a dual clutch, so all those old things have issues, right? So if you can't afford the oil change, don't fucking buy that car, right? That's a t-shirt Bugatti's right there. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Like a Bugatti's like 10, 20 grand or something stupid, right? I would never touch that thing. Just because of the maintenance on that thing, you can't, Dude, I still run to AutoZone. I still run to, and put bullshit stuff on. People laugh at me. I had like lighting in one of my C10s. I got a fucking Walmart. Yeah. Like the little, but I just wanted little neon strips under there. My cousin's making fun of me. Like, dude, you buying fucking Walmart? Works. It's I'm from Cottonwood. Dude, bitch. I'm from fucking Third yeah. Street, Cottonwood. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Nobody will know the difference. You can take the boy out of Cottonwood, but you can't take the Cottonwood out of the 100%. boy. 100%. So. Uh, but yeah, so back to the truck, I think, so all that shit was done over that time. We did the, we did the, we did the shot. Uh, they took it to SEMA. It still wasn't ready. They took it back. Man, they, they grinded on it for months. Yeah. Cause when it was at SEMA, it, it still needed, it didn't work. really, didn't move. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, burned I out. remember kind of, it's sitting there and we were, I think, I think the audience, the, 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 the guys, me, I'm sure right. even see 10 people who weren't, you right. know, into the show for that perspective. Wanted to see some some roasting. Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, we got a decent one today. Yeah, we did. Well, we got more than I would say that's way more than decent. So yeah, we'll, oh, we'll man. make sure Grindr's the audience. Be pissed. Yeah, grinder. Who? Where are you at, grinder? What? Where are you at? Where man? you at, Brian? God, this thing's been ready for you. <laughs> I'm busting their balls because they were here two days ago to shoot video, and I had an electrical problem, and I just got it fixed today. Fixed it myself with uh, some Walmart electrical stuff? tape and some Walmart and AutoZone <laughs> shit, so we could go do burnout today, but. They're coming back. We'll get a good shot. We'll get a good shots before uh, before it goes over to Barrett. I'm gonna there. I'm gonna send a pic. I just took a pic. I'm gonna send it to uh, to my boy Grinder right now <laughs> and be like, hashtag where you where, at? Hashtag where's Grinder? <laughs> where you at? Yeah, where you at, bro? I thought you were here today. I thought we were filming today. On the other side of town, bro. Oh man, he is on the other side of town. I'm gonna do a little hashtag. Can, I, can I give a shout out for diesel stuff here at local Monster Diesel? Man, they're over here on. Uh, uh, was that McQueen and Guad? Dude, Mike over there is legit. I was I was saying I wish he did normal stuff too because you go in, he works on all your shit. Like he's the one guy he come pick up the truck, take it over. I got a little leak, he'll put a new line on it. He's the one he knows that truck as good as those guys do now. I mean, he's had the whole thing pulled apart, the whole floor pulled out, and uh, dude, without without question, he's done an amazing job. I don't have nicks in it. Right, so when you have higher end vehicles like this, guys will notice when you get your shit done. Who, the, who are you going to take it to now? Right, if you if you got to get taken to you, something's outside your work, right? And that's the one thing I, I had to other shops here local. I talked about earlier, where you you get a little nick, you know, like the the bed doesn't close right now. Like what the you know, like little stupid stuff. You're like why is there grease on the fucking floor mats? So they're treating it. Monster is treating it like he's, it's there. He gets it. He's yeah, treating it like it's 100%. His. And then he'll drive it home, not because he's having fun, because he's making sure it's not leaking anymore or or this radiator line is good. And he's, you know, doing what I would do if I was a shop owner. I love the guy, dude. He's great. Mike over there, legit diesel mechanic. He's a really good dude. So, so what do you think about having a, a Duramax and a C10? It's actually, it's too much. Really? The weight? But, oh, it's so heavy. But, I mean, for what I like, I, I'm sorry, man. I like the sound of a gas engine. Just Well, we had Jason yeah. Big Ten's truck here. He's He's got his little truck here. Prime example. 6.0, turboed, 
And it was... Uh, I jack off to that. Yeah. This thing is well, like... You, let's be honest. Uh, you got a yeah. small dick. We talked yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You jack off I, to anything. Do anything. I'll put it in a tailpipe <laughs> that's, you know, on a Honda Civic. We. But, the, but, yeah, that I missed. So the Chevelle, I had that too. Where the Chevelle is nasty. That's a Duramax LBZ as well with twin Garrett's on it. And that's going on Friday at Barrett Jackson. But that thing twist up and crazy too. But that's half the power of this one. And this one's like a thousand HP oh, uh, or well, well, how much boost are we running? Fifty pounds of oh, boost we, a day. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't have it. Not even up. a problem to get. He put a basic tune in it. Mike did um, to get it where it's at. I don't even know what it could do. It, it scares me because the whole rear end will break loose at sixty. It's like the demon. Like when this thing, the drags taken off and the traction controls taken off in drag mode, it's not safe. That's really not safe. At least this has the yaw, like side to side. Yeah, but that thing. You saw when we're doing our burnouts, it just kicks out sideways. It does what it wants. Well, and like Jason's little truck, he gets so sideways. You were getting yeah. sideways. You got yeah. the brake lock. Yep. So uh, you line can, lock. Yep. You can do a lot of a lot of roasting. Yeah, I had, I had Mike add that too. Yeah. So, but the uh, uh, yeah, so we had the line lock. It was a manual shift, kind of, you know, before. So now it's just a straight auto shift, normal shifting, because it was just a pain in the ass. Um, what else do we do? So you went. So when you think about going back to the show. And you're thinking about laying it out. You're like, okay, listen, I want an LBZ. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want a Duramax. Yep. Yep. I'm thinking I want Allison. It's too yep. big. It doesn't fit. Yep. Were you in charge of wheels and brakes and some of that stuff? No. No. I told them what I wanted. I told them I wanted I wanted more tubbed. I wanted 405s. I wanted big boys in the back, like dragster. But like, then they convert like over to... 14, 15 wide or 12 or what were you Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so basically, you can put a drag tire on it. Yeah. But the, limited to the 14-inch wheel wheels. Yeah. So whatever rim I could get down and drag it is what I originally thought. That'd be fun. That's why they put the cage in it, was so I could take it down the strip. Right now, I mean, I guess I, I, I guess I could probably throw something on there, but I think I got three, three thirty fives on the back right now. Well, don't you think it's one of those things where you have to find that balance because you probably totally. have just enough meat to get away with what we did today. Totally. Whereas, like with Jason's little truck, he doesn't have a lot of meat. <laughs> And yeah. and the smoke and the burnout and yeah. the traction changes completely yeah. because of that. Yeah. So you have not only the chassis yeah. and the and the traction, you have the tire traction as well. Yeah. And I think I think uh, you know with the demon, I'd probably throw a softer spring to the rear, get a little transfer weight, and then I would throw a uh, smallest rim I could get, biggest middle, biggest not middle, uh, you know, a Mickey Thompson or something on the back, take it to the drag strip. It'd yeah. be a lot of fun. It'd be scary as hell. What you do now, right? You have a racetrack you, you get to oh, yeah, yeah. and trucks and you're you're into more than just C tents. So Oh yeah, totally. Road racing and all that stuff. I got a Viper and Porsche and some other, you know, douchebag cars. But they stay at the track. I don't I don't have them on the street that much. And have you thought about taking that to the track? Yeah, totally. I just you know, Barrett came up so fast, I had it fix fixing out a few bugs, you know, so you know, and the track days are, I had one. Oh, I did take it to the track, but it needed to be tuned and the tranny was slipping. Some guys might remember that from my Instagram before, but uh, it, it wasn't running right. So yeah. now, now, it'd be legit now. So a week from now, I mean, literally. When, I gotta t- it's supposed yeah. to be there now. I'm really? supposed to check it in like today, but I'm just hanging out. No shit. Yeah. But I'm kind of right on the fact that it's a Friday night truck, a Saturday night truck. I already know, so I don't have to be there that early. They yeah. probably saved me a good spot. Sure, I, I see that they want that there now, but more for because they're going to be so crazy. Yeah, so so it'll get prepped and ready, sitting, waiting. So it's a car show. I mean, if you've been to Barrett, it's a car show. Yeah, that's really the, that's my favorite part. Is just it the is cars crawling around, just geeking out. Um, but I think some of the C tens. I mean, the truck stuff's going to be sick this year. It is. Yeah, I think it's going right. to be really. Uh, I would. If you're going to go, find me. We'll, I'll be there Friday, Saturday. Oh, I'll be there. We'll be I, th- I think one of the cool things about that, you, you alluded to that, and I, I, I don't think I ever really put this together, but the way that SEMA continues to expand from C10s and trucks, right? They're, they're popular. And I'd like to tell the audience, right. we're in a movement. And, and enjoy totally. the movement. Enjoy totally. it because it's not going to always be C10s and, you know, rule yeah. the world. And yeah. the hardcore guys like you and I and the C10 yeah. Nation, yeah. There'll, be, there'll be some hardcore guys that could look back and say, we were in it. You know, I had a guy tell me, Those are the hey oh, you've, had, you, you've been in the <laughs> podcasting for five years. You, you must have liked C10s before they were cool. And I about, you know, I was like, yeah. dude, really? They, I thought they were always cool. Always. You know, always. but yeah. uh, I, I think that it's. Well, makes, Fords are getting, I mean, the yeah. way they're doing these Fords now, I've never been a Ford guy. I told you today, I'm kind of liking those 
four wheel drive, 76s, looking pretty good. But yeah, they're. You'll go to Barrett, you're going to see some shit. Like SEMA, you're like, oh, damn. Well, it's relative, right? If SEMA's popping, then the guys are going to make the money. And some of them are SEMA builds. Yep. Then Barrett is going to be the The economy is good, dude. There's so much money out there. They, have, they wouldn't even take my demon. I told you that. I was going to throw the demon in there just because I'm trying to make some room. Got some new shit coming. Thought, you know, I, The demon's a big car, right? It's a dragster. Uh, but uh, they could, wouldn't even take the demon. So that's how full they are right now. How fun is it driving that thing? The demon. Well, we need to go out. I'll All show right. you. Down to your drag strip so okay. I burn out mine. Yeah. We'll see if we <laughs> see some cops over there. Let's just say we laid some tire at both spots today. You'll be, you're, you'll be shocked at how um, crazy it is. Like that, for Dodge to have the fucking ball, what was the pill that you say people oh, take uh, out? Oh, grow a set? Grow a set? Yeah. Here, Dodge is the biggest set of fucking balls. Like, so my world is like, uh, I think about is insurance. I think about liability. I think about all these, you know, bullshit things that a lot of people don't think about. But when you're a business owner, you got to think about all these other bullshit, you know, negative forces that want to come in and take from you. And I think about Dodge putting this car out and putting the Viper ACR out, you know, which I have. I love that car. And the balls that they have to take the Hellcat, put it in the Jeep, put it in the whatever the, the hell, the the Challenger or what? No, they put it in the Jeep. They put it in the SUV, a Hellcat. In, in oh, the uh, the Cherokee style, yeah, whatever Jeep. it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, doesn't the uh, Diesel Brothers? I thought he had one or he something might, like that. I have one yeah, yeah. Show, but, but it's uh, it's yeah. the SUV, the yeah. Cherokee style. But for them to do that shit with these cars is insane. I mean, eight hundred forty horsepower, no joke. It's like eight hundred to the wheels with the tune. So then you get this crate right with the Demon. Everybody knows it. But then you go, you got to pay Dodge to put it in, which is kind of bullshit. But I got a, I got a Dodge guy that I trust, and I only take my shit to him. And he only works on demons and vipers. But anyways, he... Uh, <laughs> grow a set. That's yeah, grow a set. And so he... Uh, so they pull out Dodge. You get the box. With, in, the, in, in your crate, you get the actual computer. So they swap it out. So, they, that, so when you get a demon, you get it... You get 808 like, horsepower. But you don't, but it's not together with the, Ready with to go, the yeah. program. Yeah. So then they put the different air box in and then they put the, they put a few little placards on that are custom for you if you want to put on. And then they put in the tune. So we all know every turbo, every, every, uh, you know, boosted car, you know, new car, you got a little bit more, right? Manufacturers always keep a little bit out for, you know, warranty purposes. And, you know, or maybe to build it up over the next few years so they have a 10 more horsepower. Porsche does that, right? So that's emissions. The, yeah, yeah. And the dopest part is that they don't, there's something about it. They don't give a fuck about emissions. Like they got, like how are they getting away with that, you know, car that could come from a warranty perspective with 840 horsepower when it's really putting out about 800 to the wheels with the 100 octane. Um, and they take you, well, I'm going to take you out, put on drag mode. It's not controlled. I get a little spin out in the middle of the street. Really? Oh, it's crazy. For for them to have the balls to do that, I give them all the props, man. Because like nobody's doing it. I mean, they're all they're all bow down to the emissions. My fucking that maybe the that guy Range that... Rover turns off at stoplights. It's a six hundred horsepower Range Rover, and it starts stops at stoplights. I can't stand it. Maybe the guy that worked for Volkswagen, they brought him over because <laughs> they saw all the shit he was doing with yeah, the diesels. Yeah. And they're like, well, if we get the Volkswagen diesel guy, know they we it. know he can get away with it. We'll I get him like over at Dodge. Like, like they might have credits because they've done so well, but they're American cars. Like their cars weren't that great to get like emissions credits so they could have bad emissions cars out so they can get away with. But maybe because it's a limited run, but the Hellcat can't do more than 10 miles a gallon. Well, I never heard of the credit system. That's new to me, that you can get away with it. But. Yeah, that they, that they did so well that they could still have shitty emission cars, specialty cars out, a certain number at a certain emissions that they could release that would still be shitty emissions. Well, the cool thing about the Hellcat and the Demon is, to me, is how it's brought back that muscle car era. Really? Isn't that neat? I mean, to think that... I almost wonder why they don't... Um, General Motors, really. I mean, we're all a little frustrated with General Motors nowadays. Yeah. But you hear they're going to bring the Bronco back. You saw what they did with the Camaro. You see what they did with the Challenger. They got the balls. How, how, how do you not bring back, you know, a rad-ass Blazer K5 for yeah. the generation, for guys like you, for yeah. guys like me that grew up with that shit, and you're yeah. like, dude, yeah. I want I want this SUV 
and I want this old school throwback, you know, like whether it's the OJ Bronco, obviously it's the baby risk. Bronco. It's a risk because so, so we all love it, right? I mean, we all of us would line up and get that Bronco or, or a Blazer or whatever, right? But I think Dodge is the one that'll jump. Like they just jump and says, fuck it. We're going to throw a big ass fucking motor in with these fucking Priuses on the street and we're going to, we're going to do what the hell we want. And people love them for it. And they, I mean, they sold out and they're doing all right. Um, Dodge was crazy back in the 90s. Remember when they changed the truck? Yeah. They had the ugliest fucking trucks on the planet. They were. And then they went to that big ass grill and it was like, oh, love it, hate it. Remember in the 90s? Well, it was like 94, I think, is the first yeah. year. And, and that's then, where they kind of really it became cool. like the, the small pickup truck that looked like a Kenworth. Yep. Right? Yep. And, yep. and I had one. I had a 96 <laughs> with a 12 valve. And it was yep. that truck still to this day. You see them and you're like, that's pretty yep. pretty sweet truck. Well, we can't talk Mopar all day. No, no, we can't. Well, they, they do this got balls right now. Jim. What, is that the new Chevy with that fucking Down syndrome looking front end thing? Like, <laughs> no, no offense, people, but no, seriously, no, it's, it's like it's, the first thing I thought. I thought it looked like an alien from the Star Wars. It's bar bad. It's bad. With the eyes down. Yeah, low. it's bad. Well, that's so that's Cat the twenty. Fish. That's the that's the new HD, right? We've seen the twenty nineteen fifteen uh, hundreds. The GMC looks a lot better than the Chevy does for the twenty nineteen. But that's Amazing the hap- dude, that's yeah. not the HD stuff. The stuff that just released that. I posted something, uh, I think it was on the C10 Nation, and I flipped it around. I flipped the grill around, but that's all the HD stuff. So that's the 2020 HD stuff. Right. And it's crazy because you kind of think about going back to 94 and you think, oh, shit, did, did Mopar, did Dodge, did they take a hit? And I just don't see the Chevy stuff, especially because when you look at like a – a 2018 truck, I think they nailed it. I think that 2018 oh, yeah, looks more it. like a square body. You get the big grill. And love for it. whatever reason, man, they just keep, keep, here, I got it here. I'm just trying to find, oh, there it is. So I switched it and played around with it. But yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, it's bad. I don't know. Like, so when Dodge came out, right back to that. Yeah. Like, did we think it was that bad? That's what I was wondering. I well, well, most importantly, did our dads. Right, because they're yeah, the ones. Yeah, dads. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, yeah. I look back at, at at like an OBS truck that came out, and you're like, when they came out with the OBS truck in '88, I don't think I think dudes were jacked, probably because square bodies were around forever. But yeah. I think when you look yeah. at '88 to a '98, you look at a '94 OBS. Our dads had those, and uncles had those. That's, and your, that's yours. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the one that's yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, that's an '88. Right yeah, yeah. And you're like, God damn, those are rad. But I don't know that people are looking at the Chevy stuff now or the GM stuff now, and I think we're all a little concerned, especially when we bleed it and, and, our, and our kids are bleeding it. And you're like, don't even – I'll tell you right now, I'll, I'll tell you right now, for all you uh, Chevy guys, I hope you don't hate me. You know that I bleed General Motors. My daily's a General I, – I don't have anything that – I've never yeah. owned a Ford. I, I, I have a story about – Buying a Mustang for my wife. She had a Mustang when I met her at 66. I bought her a 66 pony car, beautiful car. I told her, baby, you're going to put the title on your name because I'm never going to have a Ford, right? I love the joke. You sound like me. I'll never own a Mustang. Dude, I'll tell you right now, the Ford trucks are... The Ford trucks are on point. They are. I I see the Ford trucks, the big boy trucks. I got at work, just bought one. I know. And I'm like, oh my God. I was looking at one too with that Denali. But I tell you what, there's a, a guy at work has a 17... And another guy has an 18, both GMCs. One of the brother-in-laws owns a owns a GMC dealership from the first, you know, the fire, you know the fire department, yeah, right? Yeah, One yeah. guy has a brother-in-law who married yeah, this. Yeah. So everybody goes to Brown and Brown <laughs> right. right here and uh, they all have GMCs. And when I look at a 17, I look at an 18, I really, or no, a 16 and a 17, mm-hmm. I really dig those GMC trucks. Yep. I'm a little worried about the 18, 19 stuff. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see That's why for the for the audience, listen up. Old square bodies are rad. Buy yourself an old square body. Get yourself a twelve valve. It's we have the cheap. best of both worlds. You could probably do it all for twenty five thousand, and you'll have a truck that'll last forever. And yeah. it's probably not going to depreciate if at all. It, it it appreciates, and you're looking good. So before we let you go, uh, it sounds like we're going to be able to take the, the demon out yeah, and have some go, fun. Go party. What are you thinking is going to happen? Over at the at the auction, what what do you look? One thing you kind of said before we got on air, you'd like to uh, be the highest selling C10 and set yeah. your mark. Yeah, like honestly, okay. So I've sold other stuff on Not and Barrett and whatnot, and they always key on the last sale price, right? So they know I spent one thirty, one fifty on this thing. So I think anything in that range or more, I'd be happy. But I don't know of any other actual C10. So we know the Blazers we talked about, maybe K, maybe a. Uh, uh, K10 or 
K5? No, the, so the, the, the K5, there was one, a black one that two dudes got into it. And we talked a little bit yeah, about with, with, with the, the uh, you know, when you look at, it was in Florida. And it, it was one of those things where the Ring Brothers ended up building a Blazer because the guy who lost it reached out to the Ring Brothers. And they built him a K5 this year for SEMA. It was at SEMA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And, and so that one went for like 200 and then last year, Joe Yezzy's Square Body Syndicate, it wasn't a bid truck. It was more of like a consignment truck. Oh, okay. uh, that truck, I think, went for 106 And then there was a K10 last year mm-hmm. that went for 110 I, I So think, I think you're going it, to – it's got to. I mean, if, well, if the I economy is helps, right? Honestly, there's so much money. I told you it's so full. Like, there's a lot of fucking drunk assholes in Scottsdale. Like, <laughs> they're not listening to this podcast. I guarantee it. Yeah. But they're going to go there and be like – that fucking thing, man. Look at that big store. Oh, my God. Oh, you know, we can drive it. We'll just drive it down through Scott. Okay, fucking cool, man. Buy that guy. There were all the guys that were right, <laughs> driving the the big motorcycles 15 years ago. The the, the big ass yeah. bar hoppers. Yes. And now they're older Affliction and they're like, shirts. and they're like, uh, yeah, <laughs> Affliction shirts. Affliction. And, and they were driving the big, the big bar hoppers. And now their, their girlfriends are like, I'll corn. ride in the truck. I don't want to sit on the back, the miniest back seat of your bar hopper. You know, so it's that guy. Yeah. So it's you're that like, guy. Which that's the, who I want. Which that guy is Sorry, us guys. that's successful and ended up there. Maybe and maybe they grew up in Scottsdale and they don't know yeah. us. So they didn't grow up in Cottonwood or Montana. Care. No, they didn't. No. 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 But I think, I think no, I think those guys might bid it up. But I think, I just hope it goes to somebody. Like I feel bad. Like that's why I wanted you to come. That's why you know I, I was going to do with, uh, uh, some stuff with street trucks and another magazine. I just felt bad that I have this thing, and I just haven't got it out there. Yeah, you know, that's why I got to shoot that video in Grinder, you know, and I, I just hope that whoever goes to, we can see it. Yeah. I have this old dragster, man, I'm praying the guy, he went up to Canada, but I'm, I've been Googling it, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll pop up sometime and it'll show some videos of it because I didn't have many good videos of it, but hopefully this thing goes to a place where, you know, it gets shown, it gets driven, uh, you know, do more smoky burnouts. That's a good one. Maybe take it to the track. I really hope it gets driven, you know, um. Shit, we know I did the R D on it. I did the I did fix it all up now, so it should be able to drive and, and park it and fire it up the next day, no problem. You what do know? you think? Because I, I want to wrap it up and I just thought about this. I'm sure the audience for sure wants to know. What do you think about the way they did the turbo? Was that something that I had no idea. Yeah, what do you think about it? I originally said I don't want anything coming out of the hood. I want it hidden. And uh I think it's got to a point where there's like no way. We even talked about hiding the turbos in the cab. Uh, I mean, in the in the bed. Yeah. But the the turbo boost when you do that is not drivable. It's well, crazy. The I can imagine of, the amount the of compression. Boost. That, that, that's that the, those pictures, those memes, the stock internals <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pulling fifty pounds of boost with stock internals. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you guys, I've sat in the cab. I mean, he's pulling. He can pull forty five without even blinking an eye. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't know that we're really because I'm not I'm not no. sitting in the truck when you did the crazy crazy burnout that we filmed today. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I could I could see where it's gonna you're gonna feel that shake if that turbo is in the back. Oh yeah, totally. So yeah. I I had no idea. That was something that I had no no clue about. Um, it's kind of like that, you know, love it, hate it. I know a lot of guys that hate it. And I don't blame. Them. Well, it makes you know, the truck stand love, out. I mean, it, it kills the line of the truck that I love. That sixty nine, I like that shovel on those sixty seven. You know, laid back a little more, looks good. But I like sixty nine for me is the best. I've had five of them, but I think uh, when they did that, it it definitely stands out, right? Yeah. So so. Um, uh, Tommy Weaver, he did some paintings you'll see soon. I'll have one at Barrett sitting with the truck. He did some dope ass shit. And good, Tommy's a good dude. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that you, uh, you all, said all that. my local stuff. That's yeah. cool, dude. So local, he, uh, local yeah, artist. He's up, he's up north now. I think he's yeah. up in Seattle or something. He's moved up there. He's got to ship them down. But I'll post those. I just got pictures of them. He just posts them on his Instagram. But it stands out, and that's what I wanted, right? So I wanted it to stand out. I wanted it to be noticeable. I mean, already the chassis, everything else. But I think if they hit it, you might not. It might not stand out as much. So when you think about Instagram and you think about social media these days, you got to have it a love or hate thing going on, so people will look at it. And that's what I want. I need you to look at it, talk about charity air, you know, see what my company's doing. If well, I'm sure me, the weekend warriors or the keyboard warriors have have uh, oh, gotten yeah. a little pig nose, snout nose, the I turbo, the snail, Good. Good. whatever bring it is. It. Yeah, bring it. I don't. I don't give a shit. I, it has no filter on it. It's just got that little screen on there. So uh, they built some ugly ass filter to throw on it if I really wanted, but I never put it on. 
But uh, might be eating the bug eater, dude. It is might like vacuum those like bastards vac- up, dude. Curvy, <laughs> the Kirby bug eater. Oh, dude. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a love hate thing. But I I, I think it's it, it's perfect, man. We need to come up with a saying, dude. Eating bugs and and killing thugs, man. Something. Eating, eating bugs and shitting tires. Oh, it, we shit some tires today. Some some sort of uh, charity error. We need to come up with a little slogan, dude. Eating bugs and, and, and flying or something. I'll, I'll, I'm sure my brain will go we'll to work. We'll think of something. Yeah, you've had some good names for oh, some we'll stuff. We'll come up with some yeah, crazy shit. That's, my, my, my worst is uh, Sh- uh, Cheyenne Diesel, but it doesn't really go that well. It needs a better name, so I'm all for it. We, need, we should name it before I sell it. Ooh, we we'll could come up with something. It, something good. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think uh, overall, man, it's an amazing truck. They did an amazing job for what they did. If, if you take it for what it's worth. What it was to what it is now, and the amount of money I spent on it, I got my money's worth. Yeah, I got my money's worth, hands down. It took a quarter million dollars. There's no way you could build this truck without spending that kind of money these days. So, uh, I love it. So, he loves it so much he's gonna sell it. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see it uh, go on the block in uh, under two weeks because no, it's no next weekend. No, well, not, no, not no, this no. weekend. Next the following, weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. starts next week. The weekend. what is it like the 18th or 19th, something like that, right? Yeah, because because so. they're starting it early on the 12th, I think, right? So let me look at. We're both so we're it's both on the 19th. 19th, yeah. So a little bit, not quite two weeks, uh, just shy of two weeks. Yeah. Uh, it'll go on the block Saturday night, and uh, Cheyenne and the boys will be there. Uh, we got uh, we got to see if Grinder can make it out for a video shoot because we did some, some on, cool guy. burnouts Let's today. Go. Go. And uh, I am looking at posting this right before, so I'm going to say the 15th. So we'll post this on the 15th. My audience knows that probably means the 16th or 17th, but uh, I'll get this <laughs> shit out. And uh, we'll come up cool. with a name, and, and maybe Cheyenne can... Uh, can get it, uh, get some more track time and enjoy it because I do feel like it's one of those things where you've got a lot going on just in this garage. You've got a lot going on. You've yeah. got a lot going on in your life, your kids, yeah. your, your businesses, yeah. your guns. Yeah. And it's one of those things where when you just get in the seat, you, you it takes you back and you're like, God, why am I not in this I seat more? I know. I know. I, know. I, know. I was thinking about all day today when we're putting around. I'm like, God damn, I don't want to drive this thing. Yeah, and we and we put what five miles on it. I mean, yeah. you took it before we got here, but yeah. it's it's funny to think you put ten miles on it and it brings a big ass smile to your face. Oh yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, man. That's if if anything, it's going to bring a smile to your face every single time. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I really haven't been stalking them. I might start uh, Cheyenne Lord <laughs> really bringing a smile to my face and hopefully your face. You guys, good dude, doing great things in the community. Charity Air, you could check it out. Uh, the Instagram is Charity Air, at Charity Air. Yeah, Charity Air Ambulance. Okay. Uh, we are all once Charity Air, but you can find us. Okay, so at Charity Air Ambulance, and he, you can follow him at, at Cheyenne Lord, common spelling. Uh, that one's my, I have my personal Oh, no, that's one. Lord Racing. Well, Lord Racing. But Lord Racing's the best one, yeah. Okay. That one's open. That's my public one. I show more, more guy shit. Everything from, like, what, RC cars, the guns, to C10s, to Vipers, track stuff. We're on the lake, lake community. Lake we got exactly. to, he literally lives on a lake community where the where the boat is in the backyard and you can go skiing and uh, yeah, and right now cool. he's obsessed with RC cars. So for the RC <laughs> guys out there doing RC podcast because I don't do any RC <laughs> shit, uh, you need to hit up Cheyenne and, and come in, and he's got. Oh him. yeah, we'd have some good shit over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell him to hit me up. Yeah, if you guys got any cool shit you want to do, let yeah. me know. Hit me yeah. up. Uh, this yeah. is one of those deals where he lives so close. I think it might get me into a little bit of trouble, man. <laughs> Uh, it's like, well, we could do RC cars today. We could do the demon today. Go, we could do, uh, uh we could go skiing, water skiing, wakeboarding yep. today. Yep. Go Literally, uh, the, the, the boats are in the backyard and there's a huge lake and we could go ripping up and down and, and oh, we have to mention the new racetrack apex down in Maricopa. Yeah. We go rip down there all day long. Drive yeah. in, drive out. As long I'm as the a, tires don't come off. I'm going to need more days off from, from the fire department. <laughs> Well, you got to take Saturday off. I know. I'm already, already burning here. time. I'm already burning time. <laughs> well, you guys, check him out. Uh, I promise you uh, it will not disappoint. Let's uh, let's sit back and see how much fun we can have next Saturday and yeah. uh, and hope that when that yeah, gavel yeah. drops, uh, it's over. What, what are you yeah. thinking? What's your best guesstimate? What do you what do you hope? I mean, are you hoping and what's realistic? Or what, I want, what if, I, if it went over 130, I'm real happy. Yeah. I mean, I got, you got to pay your damn fees there. Yeah. But 130, 150, 200. I mean, if somebody really wants it, let's go. Yeah, like, hopefully it'll go. Um, I wish it was the charity bid because it's you know the whole thing, but they were just too booked out for that. Yeah, you got to get in like a year in advance. But uh, 
But yeah, no. And just so you know, too, the the money that it's still going to go to my charity. Goes right back to my charity. Yeah. So well, and the, it was a charity build, right? Go. This yeah. was for yeah. the whole thing was yeah. was so purpose go right for into charity. flying people and, and getting them where they need to be and and doing that good stuff again. I think they need to get you up there, honestly. And and even though it's not in the charity spot, which we'll for see. the audience, if, if you don't get a chance and you you want to watch it, I think it's Inter- Velocity or is it Discover. I mean, it'll I'll be both. Yeah. yeah. So they do like one in the morning, then they'll switch over. Switch to over. But you know, last story, uh, Craig Jackson, the guy that runs it, I actually transported him when I was on Scottsdale Fire. Oh, really? He wrecked his uh, Corvette right at Scottsdale Mall. Yeah. And as he's finding him, took him into uh, Osborne. What a spot. Well, and he doesn't know that. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. When I see him there, I'm going to tell him, hey, remember when you were uh, C-spine and took him to the hospital? Yeah. That was me. That was me, motherfucker. Oh. So, now you're not letting me run my charity truck? Yeah. Come on, man. I think I think you need to cash in on that. And uh, if anybody could work <laughs> his magic, I think you tell I'll him. Try. Because if you get up there and you're telling them that this is going for charity, no matter what, this is where it's At going. At least if they mention it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I try to write it in my description, so hopefully they'll read it. Well, and extending that gavel, problems. and it only takes two dudes with small dicks, right? That's, That's all it, it takes: tiny, big wallets tiny and small dicks. Mentos. That might be a whole other T-shirt right there. <laughs> big wallets and small dicks. Come on up! Come on! <laughs> Come, on up. Up. Come on up! Come on, Come on down. We'll uh, we'll sell you a truck. Whether you're cruising in Scottsdale with your Affliction shirt and hitting the bar. We're taking it out. He's got some beers waiting for us, and I think we're gonna go hit the demons. So, yeah. C10 Nation. Uh, we're kicking it off right for the first episode of uh, 2019, Cheyenne Lord. Again, you can follow him at uh, Charity Air Ambulance or Lord Racing. Have fun, be safe. Late. See you later. <laughs>